as one begins to track Afro-Caribbean migrants and how they were regarded by the law as British citizens and popularly figured as immigrant outsiders who posed a type of color problem that prompted racial violence and contempt from white working class men, um, this color problem that supposedly corrupted white working class women's sexuality and infringed upon the resources of a post-war labor market and an emergent welfare state, it is precisely the image of Black Britain that is framed by the news of the Windrush passengers' arrival that becomes a kind of marker for a particularly gendered narrative about Black Britain that provides the type of justification for public scrutiny, for official regulation, and the repeated denial of claims of citizenship and belonging in the decades following World War II. So it's this idea that the color problem posed by Afro-Caribbean migration is also sort of concentrated in the figure of these, the bodies of the single black men who get sort of narrated through this vision of the Windrush passengers here. And it is this type of color problem that becomes the subject of scrutiny, that becomes the subject of needing to be regulated needing to be policed in a particular kind of way. It is about policing a particular kind of black masculinity. But as a historian of post-colonial black Britain, one of the questions I've been concerned with is what untold stories, shrouded embodied experiences, and muted voices are interpolated within the claim, London is the place for me, which remain unseen, imperceptible, and historically invisible through a fixation on the Windrush-oriented narrative that's rooted in an archive largely constructed from the perspective of those who only saw black Britons without considering the vanished point of those who articulated a vision of what it meant to be black and British through the ways that they chose to be seen. And this has led me to think more about the photographic archives of Black Britain and the interpretive possibilities that they hold for understanding and reconceptualizing histories of Afro-Caribbean migration and Black Britain in the 20th century. One of the most iconic uh, visual archives documenting post-war Afro-Caribbean migration to Britain includes scenes of hundreds of newly arrived West Indians passing through London's major rail stations during the mid-1950s, which are published in the pages of a, a, a publication known as the Picture Post. And they're published under this heading, 30,000 Color Problems. It is clear that the angles, uh, camera angles of the picture post photographers were vested in capturing and more importantly captioning a narrative about West Indians that problematized the very sight of their presence in British cities like London. In the pages of the picture post, West Indian migrants' problem status is one that was defined and captioned not by them living in British homes, working in British industries, occupying seats on the tube, sitting alongside white children in British classrooms or participating in British consumer life. Rather, it is engendered by their mere arrival, their embodied presence alone. The act of simply being in sight is a problem. But the gaze of white audiences is only half of that story of these images. In, the work, in his work on the photographic representations of West Indian migrants appearing in the picture post, uh, Stuart Hall contends that aside from documenting arrivals, the images juxtaposed with headlines declaring 30,000 color problems also represented some of the earliest moments when migrants would consciously be aware of being seen by metropolitan spectators who included their family and friends who might have met them as they arrived, as well as a predominantly white British society. As such, these types of images can also be read as moments when migrants were also hoping to make a first impression and present or represent themselves and their aspirations by the way in which they literally fashioned and styled themselves. 